Jonathan Draney ordered this nice Shelix carbide cutter head to use in my jointer and I want to compare how much that changes the noise level, power consumption and cut quality. But first I have to do the before tests with the old head. I have it set up to remove 1.2 millimeters of material. The dial indicator is metric and each turn is 1 millimeter so that makes 1.2 millimeters to take off. And I'm going to measure the power consumption using a smart plug and a computer to record and graph it. And to ensure I pass the material across at a consistent rate, I've got this uh, little winch here, which is operated by a foot pedal. And that'll pull my stock across using this hook. And turn on the jointer. Dust collector. Now one thing that's funny with this jointer is dust collection makes it dramatically louder. So even if it spins just a little wee bit, at low speeds, it's quite loud. Whereas with the dust collector off, much quieter. And then I ran a whole bunch of samples across the jointer, recording the noise and the power levels. Got a bunch of before tests done. Now it's time to swap the head. The tables are kind of awkward to remove, and this is the first time I've removed the outfeed table since I built it 11 years ago. I guess there is a little bit of dust that made it under the outfeed table. Seems to be kind of stuck on there. the wrong way. There we go. Counterclockwise thread. Well that pulley seems to be stuck on there pretty good now. Ah! There it goes. And I only cut myself a little wee bit. And the key. Unlike the old head, this has got a uh, clockwise screw. Doesn't matter that much because the key prevents things from spinning. So I just removed one carbide cutter head just to try it again and uh... A bit louder than before. I think this thing is just kind of out of balance. This shouldn't be jumping like that. This head is out of balance. I'm hesitant about putting the jointer back together right now because I have the feeling that I'll be taking it apart again real soon. So I just measured the power consumption of this thing now versus before and before I was idling at about 485 watts, now it's 651 watts. That's either because this has more wind resistance or the bearings are using up that much power. We'll see how hot they get. I rerun a lot of my test samples and looking at the video now, it's a lot quieter than it was before. And that sound was recorded with this camera with audio AGC off and both times in the same position that I marked right here. 
As for those bearings and idle power consumption, uh, when I turn it on, quite often I see power consumption of about 750 watts idling, but then it always drops off. And here, after about a minute, it's down to under 600 watts. And after that, I can feel the ends of the cutter head a little bit warmer, so this is just a matter of the grease in the bearings getting warm. And the bearings on the old head spin really freely. Except they're not really supposed to do that. Uh, somehow these things uh, probably need to be re-greased. This is a brand new bearing of the same size and this one, I just can't get it to spin freely like that at all. Now comparing power consumptions, uh, old is in red, new and blue. Idle of course went up, planing went up a lot more. Calculating the planing minus idle, I had 1.92 times as much power to do the actual planing even though I removed slightly less. On a different one, I removed a little bit more. I had a hard time getting these exactly right. And this time the power consumption was double. So for doing the actual work of planing, the Shelix head uses about twice as much power. And I guess that's really no surprise because this is a knife on my old planer head. And imagine the uh, carbites which are screwed on there like that. You can see how this is much more of a cutting edge whereas this edge actually almost goes down to the center of the head. So this is more of a scraper whereas this is more of a cutter. I resawed the plane surface off of some of my work pieces so I can compare the new and old cuts side by side. This was cut with the old planer head and this with a Shelix head. And with the light just right you can see differences fairly well. So we have lots of fine lines from the knives here. With the Shelix head much less so. Down here you can really see some of these lines and also with the Shelix head right about here. Um, we have some tear out right here with the Shelix head. With the old head, possibly the grain wasn't as bad here because it had less trouble. But there's a little bit of chunks torn out here. I do have some uh, chunks pulled out here, which with the Shelix head, I didn't have at all. With the lamp on the side, you can of course see where I've got some nicks in the uh, knives on my old head. But you can see some faint lines. There's one right here, there's another one here. So possibly some of these little cutters on the Shelix head weren't perfectly aligned. Here's another comparison and of course we can see the line from the Nyx right here. Whereas here there's much less of that. And we see fewer lines from the knives and both are quite shiny. Uh, another chunk with the old head where I've got some tear out here. And then on the whole surface there is a little bit of speckling. I think that's from chips getting caught between the knives and the wood itself. That's a problem with my jointer, not so much with a straight knife head. But uh, on the other side, we see none of that sort of defect. And uh, even though we've got some difficult grain here, it's nice and smooth. Here's some spruce. There's some small bits of tear out near the knot here. Overall pretty good, uh, a little bit of speckling from chips getting caught between the knives. Let's do the after. And here's the after. Still some tear out right here. Overall uh, pretty good, uh, it's hard to tell the difference. Here's another piece. Uh, this one you can see the speckling from the chips quite a lot. And of course the lines from the nicks. And here's after, we see some faint lines across from the cutters. And with the light across, we see some lines along from the cutters not being perfectly aligned. And uh, some slight scalloping, because each cutter makes a bit of a scallop in there. And some roughness along here. That actually does feel a little bit rough. I wasn't seeing that before. And total power for this cut was uh, 2000 watts. Previously I did that with 1200 watts, but the increase over idle was 1400 watts, whereas before that increase was 750 watts. So once again, the actual cutting action takes nearly twice as much power. Now I've been doing most of my tests by pulling the piece through with a winch, but uh, if I don't use that and I push the piece through manually, I really have to push on it hard because those uh, scraping things, they really push back hard against the workpiece. Now some of those little divots from uh, chips getting caught on top of the knives, I probably made that a lot worse by setting the knives really low in this head. That was in an effort to make it quieter, but I think it just doesn't give it enough room around here for the chips. So if I end up putting this head back in, I'll set the knives a millimeter higher. I also need to re-grease those bearings. But if I do keep this head in here, 
I have to do something about balancing it because it just sounds like something's about to explode or maybe it's the bearings. I just don't like the sound of this. Well, the uh, carbide head wins this one for sure. I see a very faint streak starting at the uh, nail, but it seems to fade out after a bit. So possibly this wasn't so much damage to the head, but maybe some bits of metal that got caught on the edge of the head. But here's what a screw does to a conventional cutter head. Fortunately, this was not on my planer. Now I can't say right now whether overall I prefer the old head or the new head. They both have their advantages. I will definitely leave it in there for now just to get a bit more experience using it.